the, what the story is about. Because I know when you sent me your book, mm -hmm. and a lot of people send me stuff, and like, I try to get around to reading it or whatever. So I started reading it because I was on, I took it on the cruise with me. Uh -huh. I was like, oh my goodness, that's, that's what's going on here? And I'm thinking, wait, okay, well, wait, one, two, three, four, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is it's real juicy. So I maybe give a little background on the story of what the of what the series is about, or the story is about. Okay. Um, Justice is the story of a love, I like to call it a love quadrangle. Um, Justice, played by Mr. Paris Buford, um, <laughs> he is seduced into joining a drug mafia cartel by his lover, Steph, who couldn't be with us this weekend, um, played by Tony Tolbert. Uh, when he goes into this, his first thought is that he wants to get out, um, but knowing what he knows, he can't, you'd have to watch the series to find out, but knowing what he knows, he can't readily just walk away from the situation. Um, he gets beaten, he gets raped, he gets tortured, um, he gets threatened. That's the whole lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it all happens, in the, it all happens in the first episode. Okay. <laughs> so how do you research for something like that? Oh. They, they put me through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Unwillingly, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was right, so yeah. unwilling. And, and then they, when they pried the shirt off me, I was just, I couldn't work like that. <laughs> As your visibility increases, of course, people are going to maybe objectify you sexually, physically. Yeah, which they've already done. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, about this. About mm, 10 years ago, never would have. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened from now, from 10 years ago to now? Well, I think that I, I first of all, I matured. And not only that, um, I grew my locks. And, you know, wearing locks and building your body up a little bit differently, that kind of turns people on. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> virus. Yes. All right. But, <laughs> not to mention the bad tone. How, however, I, I mean, I, I have a degree in theater. I mean, this is something that I've, I've always wanted to do, so I prefer that people look at my talent. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, I see talent. <laughs> <laughs> Coming into this, I was, I was a good church going. I, you know, I tried to follow my script prescriptions and whatnot. And you know, all, I just, I was, you're all American, and I, I worked at a credit card company. Like I just was tr trying to achieve the American dream, as everybody is. And unfortunately, getting caught up with the wrong crowd, wrong people, it completely changed my life around 360. Well, oh, in the book. Mm -hmm. Justice was a hot ass mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I went from loving him to hating him to feeling sorry for him to like, okay, well you just stupid. So I mean, uh, what is it like to play a character like that? Well, it's actually kind of hard. For, it's for me because me, I'm very just like. Uh, we, we've already, because there was a joke out, like we, you discuss what type of people there are in your group. You, as you travel with a pack, there's the complainer, there's the broke bitch, there's the this, the that. <laughs> uh, you see, I, I qualify as a couple. But <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was, I tend to be the complainer because I'm decisive. I'm, if I don't like this, I don't like it. If I don't want to do that, I don't want to do it. But this, he more or less, he's intrigued, he's not intrigued, he's this, he's that. He's he's just always trying to grasp something so it was kind of hard for me because i when i first came onto the project i was when i first read like okay if the bitches are happy about so and so why wouldn't he just leave or shoot his ass and be over but it's more complicated than that and then i had to take myself away from that and put myself in him and his character he he really is he he just he can't grasp it but he is slowly and surely growing the whole time um i play jojo daniels I actually died in the book. I'm the first person to it, but I stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much am the sidekick to his arch rival in the show. So pretty much, I'm always trying to get rid of him. Have you had a friend who's tried to manipulate ever your situation with your partner or your boyfriend, somebody that you were ever seeing? Yes. And how did you, <laughs> how did that happen and how did you resolve that? Um, me, I would just get rid of the friend. Because the friend have, does not have your best interest at heart if they want to become an arch rival and try to get rid of 
your partner. Now, we don't have a lot of um, uh, public images of same-sex male couples, especially African-American, that are in long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. Although I'm learning more and more all the time that there are a lot of them out there, mm -hmm. um, how do you think we could... Um, how do you think somebody could be successful in a long-term relationship? Are any of you in long-term or successful ones? Or unsuccessful? <laughs> You're in a successful one. I've been in mine for four years, and in gay terms, that's what, 20? <laughs> 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 that's 25. 25. But um, I think the key to having a successful long-term relationship is the level of maturity that we actually have versus the level of maturity that we think we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's more so about understanding when you're going into the relationship not what you look for in another person but what you yourself as a person will tolerate what you can put up with what you like and what you don't like once you establish for yourself what you like what you don't like what you can tolerate what you can put up with you can then go into a relationship and make sure that when you meet this person you're not trying to make them into somebody else right. you go in with open eyes so that this when they come to you and they start doing all of these things you can hold a conversation mm -hmm. and just decide if you want to continue forward or stop mm -hmm. i just don't think a lot of us get to that level of maturity or mm -hmm. understanding because i think a lot of times we're attracted to the physical or mm -hmm. we're distracted or i don't know but i i think that that's what you know like what society puts in front of us that's why i would prefer that people see my talent, talent. Mm -hmm. versus my I body <laughs> my acting talent <laughs> But, you know, I mean, I think if people took the time and slowed down a little bit. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I have not been in a relationship, a dating relationship, in five years. Wow. Yeah. And people are always like, you know, you're such a great guy. Why don't you, you know, why aren't you in a relationship? Because God hasn't said so. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm okay with that. And there are times, don't get me wrong, I get lonely. And, you know, I have my experiences, but it's not like I'm so bent out of shape that I'm not in one. Because I'm comfortable with myself enough to know exactly what I like, like he said, from what I don't like. And you're not going to come in my life with mess. Mm -mm. You guys single? No. I am actually involved. It's, it's, it just came up. <laughs> no, 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 it's I'm the only single one. Okay. <laughs> Because I've been doing the same thing for like so long. Now, I, I, I respect we were saying, you know what I'm saying? It took me a minute. I was trying to do the little mature thing. and But like now somebody has become, I feel blessed. And I'm actually in a happy spot. I'm not trying to press things forward. But it's, okay. it seems to be going good for kind of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> about dating. I mean, I know you guys are seeing some people. Could you date someone who was not your financial equal? Do you have shit? Yes. If they were... I have been there. It's a financial strain on you sometimes, but if you love the person, you will be there for them until they are equal to you. Sometimes. Well, that depends on. Yeah, if sometimes. You don't want, if you don't want to point the duck, that's right. No. 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 I've been doing this for a long time, right. trying to make it. This relationship is sponsored by. <laughs> issue as it becomes in a relationship finances are a small part of the issue that people look at to me finances aren't the whole the be-all and the end-all you can date someone who makes less money than you but who's trying to get to where you are that's the part that you have to look at if a person has no money and ain't trying to go nowhere why would you date them in the first place mm -hmm. right that's my issue but if, a per but if a person has no money and ain't trying to get no money why would you date them in the first place but if you have somebody who is you met this person, they're 35, and they're telling you that they're working at McDonald's because that's the only job that they could get, and they're trying to get somewhere else in their life, and you see a plan in place, why not go for it? Because mm -hmm. that's the man that's trying to go somewhere. You always want somebody who's willing to do something as opposed to somebody who won't take anything. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Recognizing potential, but then also potential has to manifest. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be having the same conversation with you. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Look, after you, a while, you still I need a five piece. <laughs> after a while, I'm going to need a two piece in the business. <laughs> okay. What is the maximum age difference that you would date someone like, plus or minus? You don't want to answer that. You can't well, ask either one of us that question. I, well, <laughs> okay. my, my husband right now is 12 years old. 12. 12. That's not too bad. I don't... I don't... In gay years? Yes. Well, I guess... It, well, uh, well <laughs> I guess. We're on opposites of the spectrum. Mine is 11 years younger than me. 11 mm -hmm. young. Okay. 
So sometimes you feel like you have uh, that you're parenting. Not at all, actually. Okay. Not at all. I always wonder that because well, sometimes we see like more mature people with younger people, mm -hmm. but is that yeah, and we automatically assume that that's a type of financial mm -hmm. type of situation mm -hmm. or something like that. So I always wonder what is too old or too young to uh, mm -hmm. have an age difference. How do you feel about that? Well, honestly, the, all my past, I've I've always stuck to my age range. Well, no, let me take that back. Cause when I was <laughs> when I was a little younger, you know, I've always liked men, so <laughs> men's achievements stick out. So you know, even when I was around seventeen, a man that was you know kind of twenty four ish that was cute. So now I'm actually around twenty four, but I'm still in that age range. So I haven't really had too much uh, outside that. So I don't know. Any um, exciting coming out stories when you? Uh, oh, I mean, I, I mean, I'm just assuming. Mine was very bland. My parents were very accepting. I have like my family is gay as hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> aunts, cousins, siblings, are gay. So it's just like, okay, you're another one in the family. That's it for me. So there was a comfort level because I was wondering, what would you tell somebody out there who? It's struggling because, like a lot of people, and you'll find this as your video starts to spread. They they'll find you in places like Russia. And like first of all, y'all got black queens in Russia. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. they do. Yeah. Um, what would you tell somebody that's like living in that type of environment about coming out? They're struggling with their sexuality, and, but they don't live in a place like New York or Miami or Atlanta where it's easy. Um, usually I would tell somebody that coming out is a choice. It's not mandatory. It's not something that you have to do. And you have to do it when you're comfortable enough to do it. Don't, don't allow someone to force you right. into doing it. Mm -hmm. But when you do do it, it's the most liberating thing that you could possibly do for yourself. Because once you do do it, you de you've defined who you are and you don't allow others to define you. Mm -hmm. Right. And once you've had that definition for yourself, you're good to go from there. You know, my brother-in-law, um kind of said some things that just kind of made me think about why is it necessary? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think he was the one that I had this conversation with and I used to feel that, you know, coming out was something that you should do and I think I only felt that way because people were doing it. Mm -hmm. And I came out to my mother because my father had already passed and, um, you know, she didn't, you know, she, she didn't take too well but she actually, you know, she loves her, she loved her child. She's deceased now, but she loved me regardless. Mm -hmm. um, and I just say that I, I don't know now, I don't know that it's necessary on a certain level because you should just feel free to be you and all of you. And I think if we stop putting gay in front of everything, mm -hmm. it would be so much easier for people to love themselves and then they'll be matched up with the right person you know, eventually, mm -hmm. so that they're not looking for these things that are outside of themselves. Just be comfortable with who you are. What do you gentlemen think of images of black gay men in the media today? Justice excludes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll take mine. Of course, the stereotype now, the, the hair salon, the nail salon, just the, the you know, Excuse his term, but the fairy floating around. You got that token friend. Ooh, girl, child. So that's that's uh, the, what now. What I do appreciate about justice again, it offers a whole wide variety because and and now the 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 biggest outing, of course, that started with uh, Oprah, I think, was the whole DL man thing. Now, so either it was in those two classes, because um, America now likes to see the DL. They can't believe that this person, you know, what I'm saying has. Uh, some kind of intimacy or feeling for another man, either the DL character or the fairy. But there's a whole, there's a whole variety of people. There's people who live their lives. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 so vast, and that it, it, you can't just classify it in that one. And I'm so happy now with this one that you can that it, you it's a, exactly. It's a variety. Right. You can't you can't match it. But that, that's why I, I did this, because I want to change what we see in the media, because as it stands right now, anytime we get attention, it's because a sports figure is coming out, or a newscaster is coming out. But what about the normal man who's been out all his life? I mean, is he just nobody? No, I mean, you have the everyday working man who's out there, who's living it day to day. Just because a sports figure came out, that's going to shine a light on who we are as a people? Mm -hmm. uh, no. But then that reflects our society and how our society views gay people. Yep. 
and you know the things that they put in the media and how the media kind of structures what they want to feed to us and um, it's not great it's not a good thing you know but I do think that when people like the newscasters and the sports figures when they do come out it kind of normalizes it or the fact that that gay people are everywhere. Mm -hmm. it, it does, but the, the only, and I apologize for cutting you off, but the only thing, the only drawback I have to that is anytime they come out, the very next week, what are you seeing? Oh, he has a new single out, or he has a new book out. It's like they're coming out to draw right. press to, to themselves so that they can then promote what it is they're doing next. Not that that's a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, because heterosexuals do that. That's what yeah. TV is about. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Not that that's a bad thing, but why can't we as who we are just be comfortable be accepting and be happy without there having to be some sort of something that comes next that we need for you to feed into what is the longest amount of time that you've gone without having sex oh jesus um, since I'll you started start having sex <laughs> what, what I'll let you start with that <laughs> well most recently probably four months okay but i mean that broke <laughs> <laughs> so that broke a couple a rampage, months ago. Right? <laughs> but i mean you know to be honest with you i have i'm a sexual person you know oh for real i, I am <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, 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 I didn't know. No, no, no. I'll take two to go. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I'm sexual, but I don't always have to have it. But I am knocking 37 next week, mm -hmm. and the older I get. My sex drive has you know, has really you grown, know and this is not a promotion. Okay. No, she, <laughs> I think no, like a commercial. I think he moved the team when he said it. <laughs> no, I but I'm, I'm just saying that you know, as a yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> stop it. I stop. I quit. How long for you? The long without sex period. Uh, Child, wrong person to ask. Yeah, the wrong person to ask. Two it. days. I'm, yeah, two days. Like right now, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> His husband hasn't gotten here yet. You know what? Yeah. Well, mine was six months, and that was just re before I started dating my little friend. That was six months. I just, I just. You know how every, I guess I hit my little part early where you get bored with that was for you like okay this, this you know just okay if I can't find something like just pay it so I was just upset and was waiting for something to come along but the six months that was the longest six months of my life <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool it was okay. I did two years actually. two years well, that's what you're going through <laughs> <laughs> I just, you did <laughs> well what here, here's what it was and I'm, I'm a very I'm an extremely spiritual person when uh, I lived in South Carolina we were working on different projects in ministry and the person that was over the ministry, we, we were going on tour that summer and he said, abstain from the thing that you love the most. In case you ain't read the book, <laughs> in case you ain't read either book, sex is something that I enjoy and I go for with gusto. I live my life just to the extreme period. Yes. Um, without, with reckless <laughs> abandon, I mean, I'm cautious, but without, with reckless abandon. But when we did that, I noticed that there was a change that took place in my life for the positive because my focus was not on where can I get to next or who's coming into my life and when we gonna lay down and how good is it, how big is it, how loose is it, and all this other stuff that we were talking about. Not the my focus. <laughs> 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 but look, you know what? You, look, you read the book, so you know how bad I am. Hello. I think I touched myself but, in chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I touched you in chapter <laughs> three. <laughs> well, no, in chapter three, you touched both of us. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, oh, it, okay. my, focus, my focus actually became something different. And out of that focus came Maasai, came Justice, and two other books that, I have, that I've written but haven't published yet. In that, in that two years, I wrote four books because my focus became different. Well, I want to ask one other quick question um, about dating. When you start dating someone as a gay man, mm -hmm. and you're interested in making it into a long-term relationship, how long should you wait before you have sex with that person? Oh, I love that question. I, I, do, I, do, like I, that do. I do. I don't like that question. Because I feel like it's between you and that person. It could be different for each person. Because you could have that person you want to jump right into bed with, find out if it's going to be worth 
dating them because sex might be horrible. Y'all might not be sexually compatible, and which is a big important thing. <laughs> and then next thing you know, you're cheating. But so, can't you teach and coach? And some people aren't interested in teaching and coaching. Exactly. You can. You can. Some people aren't interested in, in, in taking that step. Like, I, I agree with Argy. That, that's my favorite answer. For me to say how long someone else should wait before they have sex with someone, it's not fair because my timetable and their timetable are totally different. You have some people, my parents, for instance, my parents believed in love at, love at first sight. They met the day they were going to the prom, uh, had sex that night. I was conceived that night. They were together for 20 uh -oh. years. Yeah. They got divorced. I mean, they got they got divorced after the twentieth year, but it wasn't because that they didn't like each other. It was because that my mother and my father, after twenty years of marriage, decided that they were better off as friends than lovers, so they separated. But it, it it's your timetable. It's all according to what it is that you want to do. I met the person I'm with now. We went on two dates, and in a week, he was asking me when was I gonna move in, and I looked at him like he was oh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him like he was the most retarded thing in the world. But I ended up spending a week with him, and after that week, I was like, well, why not? And it's been four years as of May 3rd. So, like I said, your timetable and my timetable may be different. Some people may say, well, that was too soon, but uh, four years and I got three rings. So you go, you do the math. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to close with a question that my all-time favorite Oprah Winfrey always asks. What do you know for sure? I'll, I'll start that one. I know for sure that I was meant, I was put here to do something different. I know for sure that I was put here to put a new face on gay men and women of color. I know for sure that I was meant to give them a platform for different things. I know for sure that that's my purpose and that's what I'm living for. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I know for sure I'm a good person. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know for sure that um, I will be Oprah status if how, whatever that means. I've seen it ever since I was a little boy, and I didn't think it would take this long. <laughs> and, and, and you know, honestly, that, it doesn't really matter the, the the status. But you know, when you see a thing and you feel it, you just know it. Mm -hmm. it it's a knowingness. So I know for sure that. Um, I'll also have a, I'll also change lives. Mm. Um, I know that for sure. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm just, I'm, this might get inappropriate. <laughs> you get on a turn over here. What do you young men know for sure? Now? <laughs> well, for sure, I know God is good. I'm still here. I have two working arms and legs. Thank God my family is happy and healthy. I'm happy. God is good. I know for sure that I was put on this earth to do something creative, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I spent too much of my adult life doing office work, which was not something I need to be doing, because mm -hmm. that is not my forte. I do not like sitting at a desk. Mm -hmm. Lord knows I hate looking at a manager. <laughs> Lord knows I hate talking to a manager. Um, so I just know for sure that I should be doing something creative and be free-minded instead of so close-minded as an office can be. Well, I definitely want to thank the men of justice. You guys have just been so wonderful. This has been a long time coming. I've been looking forward to it. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for climbing in. Thanks for having me. It's all good. Hands above the conference. <laughs>